the top reasons why people are disappointed when they come and travel to Tulum. And the first reason is because they think it's Cancun. People always ask top question, where are the all-inclusive resorts in Tulum? Where can I stay at the resorts on Tulum Beach? And you know what? There are no resorts here like there are in Cancun. Dreams, the Conrad, the Hilton, those are outside of Tulum. Yes, they're beautiful resorts, but those are not in Tulum proper, except this new one, the Secrets Resort. This is a brand new all-inclusive actually located in Tulum, granted in a neighborhood that's still up and coming and it's pretty far away. It will advertise itself as being near the beach. <laughs> No, it's not. But that's not what Tulum is about. It's not about the all-inclusives. Go to Playa. Go to Cancun for that. I just came from an amazing all-inclusive. Tulum is something else, but you do have an option in case you want it. And if you're new here, yo, I'm Christine Lozada with Where in the World is CL and I make travel videos every week to help you get up, get up, go travel. So if you like to travel, consider subscribing. I never thought I would say this, but I think this might be my last trip to Tulum. I love this place, but it's, it's changing and ew, the mosquitoes haven't changed. That's for sure. I'm making this video for you to help you set your expectations and know how to travel smart to this place so you can have the best trip possible. There are lots of videos and lots of blog posts. So check the description for tons of free resources. And let's talk about the next helpful tip. And so the thing that in general disappoints people when they travel to Tulum is that they oftentimes tell me, wow, Christine, it's so expensive. It's so overpriced. And you know what? It depends on your experience and where you're used to traveling. I used to live in New York City. And when I'm on Tulum Beach, I just expect to pay the same prices I paid when I lived in New York City, and that's expected. It's in range with that. Obviously, you can find very inexpensive things if you go into Pueblo and you go into town. And so on the beach, the lodging is significantly more expensive. Here are a couple examples of places that I was looking at and love. You can see the other video and full blog posts to get more of an idea of where to stay. You can save a lot of money in Pueblo. Here are some places that I've stayed and also with food. Let's do, an, let's do a tacos to tacos comparison, you know, like apples to apples. Tacos and wine on Tulum Beach, you can expect to pay about this much versus if you go into Pueblo, you can expect to pay about this much for the, a similar meal. And so there's just varying differences of how much you will pay around Tulum. And in general, this is not an inexpensive place to travel. To be honest, you should consider going to Holbosch Island. I was just there last week. Amazing. More info on that in the description as well. I'm gonna start with one that I'm really disappointed about, which is they have not fixed the taxi situation. In other words, you can pretty much expect to get scammed by taxis. And that's one of the few scams that happens. See the other video and blog post for this one and the other scams one so that you can be a smart traveler, but it bothers me that especially if no habla espanol muy bueno, my Spanish is not that great, but I speak enough to get by. If you don't know what's going on, if you don't know average prices, the same person will pay $5 for a ride that someone else will pay $50 and depending on the situation, 500 US dollars for. So that bothers me that they have not regulated the taxis yet. It's still impo not impossible. It's difficult to get around Tulum and it's expensive to take taxis. Uh, where I'm at right now, a lot of people will stay in Aldea Zama and La Valeta thinking they're saving so much money on this amazing place they're staying at and then will spend all of their money on taxis. And that's disappointing. Hey, by the way, if you're getting some value out of this video, girls working hard for you and being honest, cheers that like button, consider subscribing. And if you have a helpful tip, we're all a community and everyone needs to travel smarter. So add it in the comments below so that we can help each other. Whoa, this is Tulum. My mind is blown. <laughs> Let's keep it going with what else people are disappointed by related to pricing is uh, the beaches. So yes, federal law says in Mexico that all the beaches are free, but is that the case in Tulum? So one of the big change that I've noticed is now they've made the north part of Tulum Beach the national park. And so you have to pay to get in. 
I had an issue paying yesterday, was not happy about that. Getting scammed out of a little bit money is less about the amount and more out of principle. Beaches that used to be free and accessible on North Tulum Beach are no longer free. You have to pay for the national park fee. Um, and there's also just a weird way of getting in and out of that entire area. It's a headache. South Tulum Beach. I mean, I had a really bad experience uh, two days ago in which they just treated me like crap as I was trying to just walk from the beach, actually through the resort to get back to the road. They don't want you to walk through their properties, vice versa, either way. Oh man, here's something that hasn't changed, which is the bugs. Let me keep talking to you about this in a second. Also disappointing, the bugs. Oh, they're all still here in Tulum. Oh my God. The bugs go on and on. Wow, look the at that. Bugs. Maybe my tires are stinky. Ooh. I don't even know what that means. So if you're looking to go to the beach for free in Tulum, it's not impossible. It's definitely possible. But the very easily accessible part of Tulum Beach that's free, I feel like there's only a tiny sliver of it. But it is available to you. Obviously, you can just charge through the resorts and just let them yell at you and then just stay on the beach in front of them. That's an option. But to be honest, like that that's not for everybody two other things that are important to know about the beach that disappoint a lot of people the first one is the seaweed the sargasso and people are like oh why is there seaweed you can read your own research about why it happens i'll link some helpful resources and research in the description um, but one of the things about the sargasso is that in the summer months when it's hot it is bad on the beach and Tulum Beach looks totally different. You can still enjoy the beach but the seaweed smells, the seaweed has flies and the seaweed is itchy and it's not nearly as beautiful as during the winter months so while I'm here now the beaches are absolutely beautiful. They're trying to do more to catch the seaweed with nets if they just rake it, so for example, I stayed on a Tulum Beach hotel that I 100% do not recommend, um, and they rake the seaweed, and it, it really doesn't make that much of a difference in my opinion. The other thing that disappoints people about Tulum Beach, because they want to go enjoy all the beach clubs, which you should, um, is that there are not very many that are free. And I'm not saying you have to pay an entrance, I'm saying you have to pay, actually it depends on the season, it depends on the season. There will be a minimum spend. So it's some of the more vibey ones, you might spend anywhere from like 75 US dollars to 100 US dollars minimum um, in consumption to be able to enjoy the space and they reserve if it's attached to a hotel the majority of the spaces for hotel guests and so one of the things is if you are truly planning on just being on Tulum Beach consider staying at one of the beach hotels um, but again don't be disappointed about the associated prices that go with it but it's helpful to know what to expect and if you want some tips around beach clubs to stay for free then I have a helpful live stream that you might want to check out. I love what's happening behind me. Also, there's a vibey uh, cocktail place right behind me as well. So consider checking out that live stream. I wouldn't say it's lost what made it special, but it's losing what made it special. Tulum is just changing a lot. I mean, right now I'm in Aldea Zama with well-groomed dogs and women. I mean, I'm rocking Lulu. Am I rocking Lulu Lemons? I think I'm rocking Lulu Lemons. This place is really special and there's, there's a energy and a spirituality about Tulum that is starting to become almost commercialized. And so one thing I'm noticing as I travel back in February 2024 is that the Temezcal experience is something that's blown up everywhere. Um, go to Teposlan. I was there two months ago to have a proper experience with Temezcal. But here you can get experiences like that. And you just have a lot of people here who are coming for a spiritual light experience and it's making it something else. Oh, hey. Oh, what's that? Here's another thing that makes Tulum really special, which is the cenotes. Cenotes are specific to the Yucatan area, amazing spiritual places for the Mayan people. And it doesn't feel very special anymore when 500 people with life jackets and helmets are jumping around and screaming in the cenotes or taking all the crazy Instagram pics. I like to take 300 photos in less than 30 seconds. You can learn about that in the description below. Or another thing that's special here is the ruins and a big, big change since I was last here in 2022, which is they've made that entire north 
section of Tulum Beach a national park. And so now you have to pay to get in and the whole thing just feels like a zoo. And so I went over the, there yesterday with the intention of going to the ruins. I skipped it. I went ahead and just rode my bike past the entire area and looked at the beaches and saw what was new. But the ruins will feel like a zoo as will the cenotes depending on when you go. The other reason why it's losing its luster is there is just construction everywhere and there's trash everywhere. And it makes me sad to hear that they are excavating the jungle or they are filling the cenotes with cement or fill in the blank. There's just a lot of construction going on. And the other thing is you'll start to see malls. You'll see malls, you'll see um, local restaurants starting to become local chains, um, or you'll just straight up start to see chain restaurants. Tulum is just changing. For me, this was a very local experience in the past, and and, and now I can walk into Sevi, go into 7-Eleven, and get my jugs of water. Here's one more reason why Tulum is not like Cancun. It's not really built on a grid. They're trying in Aldea Zama, uh, but it, right now the power just went out for the third time today, which is generally not a big deal, except you're, you know, unless you're trying to work. But a lot of people come here expecting everything to work. I actually, here's another one. Should I show you, should I show you the toilet? Uh, a lot of people, think that you can just, you know, flush things down the toilet. Yeah, that, that don't work like that here. All these, I just turned on the light. I forgot that the power is out. Um, anyway, all my toilet paper is in there because you can't flush toilet paper. And the toilet will only flush about like 60% of the time, depending on where you're staying. Uh, I think it will work better at my next hotel versus this one, which you can learn more about in the description, but it's not Cancun. Oh, this video is not easy to make, so please make sure you cheers that like button or let me know if you are finding value in this video in the comments below. It will make me feel better about continuing to make these videos, but it's still disappointing about how tough it is to travel here. And I mean that from a few perspectives. One, service. Service can still be bad here. There are parts of Tulum Beach where I, my phone got no service. Um, I have been using a new eSIM, which I actually am a fan of. Info on that in the description below to grab your discount. It's been keeping me more connected. I flip back and forth between my Verizon connection and my eSIM connection to see which one is better. Um, Google Maps cannot keep up with how fast this place is growing. And so a lot of times I'm looking at Google Maps and I'm like, this is not located here. Um, and it's, it's located close to there, but like within two blocks. And so you can't like be like, ah, this is blank. It's like, no, nah, somewhere in range is blank. And so that is still kind of frustrating in my opinion. And I'm gonna be totally honest, the last thing that still bothers me and disappoints me about traveling here is safety. And so the recent incident that happens with a shooting on Tulum Beach, you can do your own research. I will link that below. If you go and read all the Reddit forums or things like that, people will be like, no, you know, there's no lights at night, but it's fine walking around. And you know, like the roads are not paved, but it's perfectly safe. And those people don't understand that what most people are referring to as safety is the presence of the cartel. Um, and so I will let you do your own research on that. I will say since 2022, now that I'm here in February, 2024, wow police and military presence for real. What's new are the ATVs that they have and the buggies that they have and the trucks riding around town with their guns out. They are everywhere. Do I feel safe with them? I don't know because it goes back to come join me in the scams video. There's a reason why I'm on an e-bike and not on a scooter because they will stop you for any reason that they want to. Um, and so with this little guy, <laughs> boom, I'm Christine Lozada. If you found some value in this, cheers that like button, add your helpful tip below, see the description, tons of helpful content in there for you. Will I come back to Tulum? See you in the next adventure, ciao. I just thought of another one that's important about something people are oftentimes really disappointed by, and that's um, saving money on where you stay by staying in somewhere that, oh my gosh, that looks so good, it's ouch, brand new property, etc. cetera, um, and they stay in La Valletta or Aldea Zama. And Aldea Zama's steps to the beach, proximity to the beach, it's so far from the beach. Um, I wanna show you my eyes right now. I just biked about 15 minutes. Um, 
and there's just so much, oh, it's the worst bike ride ever. Anyway, a lot of people will save money on that and then be super disappointed by how far they are from things in addition to how much they will no longer spend on things like this dude right here, taxis. Taxis, so expensive. Oh, I'm on super duper south part of Tulum Beach. I bet if I were to taxi back, actually right now, not that bad. But if the sun went down, oh, this, this would probably be like, first price they'd give me probably like 75 USD. I already know it. <laughs> I have a bike full battery. I need a little bit of Zen to talk to you about this next one. So another one that people are disappointed by, and this is a top question people ask me is, should I bring my, ch my child, my toddler? Should I bring my young 16 year old to Tulum? I want to do a family trip to Tulum. Maybe it depends on what you're doing. Like if you're coming to Tulum just to like stay in town, maybe see the ruins and then go to the cenotes and then like go to Eshkaret Park, which is really actually quite fun to be honest, maybe. But uh, if you're going to go stay on Tulum Beach, you can go check out the live stream I did the other day in which I'll be totally honest. There was a kid in the background and there were two ladies with their with their with no top on uh, and they one of them had a policeman st standing in front of her. He didn't know what to do with her because she was just bagging up drugs and selling them to anyone who walked by. That's Tulum Beach. There's also people walking around with cowboy boots and fashion that looks like a fish net over their head. And that's Tulum. I mean, it's just a weird, wild and wacky place and I love it. But if if I had the option to bring my super cute nephew here, I hell no, I ain't bringing him here. I will happily bring him to Playa, happily bring him to Cancun. Here, no. He ain't coming to Tulum. This is a paved road blowing my mind. Also, I'm not gonna lie, this is a yoga studio I wanna check out. It's $25 a class. I will be back for you. Look at this. That looks like air conditioning inside. Wild. I don't feel like I'm in Tulum. <laughs> I'm not having a little bit. Will I come back to Tulum? Probably, probably. I want to see what's up. Beach clubs are a vibe. See you in the next adventure. Ciao.